So today's video will be the next in the series of three-in-ones. Um, today we'll be doing the horse. So we'll have this little brown horse. Um, we'll be doing the unicorn and the little um, Chinese calendar year of the horse. Um, this video will be a little bit different because the unicorn will be adding the horn and the different hair. So there may be a few spots where you want to skip if you're doing the horse and not the unicorn or if you're doing the unicorn and not the horse. But all the parts for everything you see right here is in the video. Um, depending on what color you're using, I'll be um, referring to the colors as the main color and the accent colors. Um, and I think let's just get started. Okay, so we're going to start with the body in the main color. You're going to just make a loop or do your magic circle or your chains, however you usually make your your rounds. And in this first loop, we're going to do six single crochets. So pull the yarn through, chain up one, and then you'll do your six single crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you're just going to keep going. Starting in that first chain one single crochet and you're going to put two single crochets all the way around in each stitch for a total of 12. This tail is in my way. One and two. Three and four. Five and six. Seven and eight. Nine and ten. Eleven and twelve. And that is the end of row two. Now I'm just going to grab a little chunk of yarn as a stitch marker just in case I get off track talking and forget what I've done. <laughs> so for round three we're going to do one single crochet and then a single crochet increase into the second stitch. So one and then two and then we're going to do that all the way around for 18. So one Two and three, four, five and six, seven, eight and nine, ten, eleven. And 12, 13, 14, and 15, 16, 17, and 18. Now for round four, we're going to do the same thing, only we're going to do two single crochets and then our increase. So one, two, three and four, five, six, 
seven and eight. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Seventeen. 18, 19, and 20, 21, 22, and our last increase for 23 and 24. Let's flip your stitch marker. And so for round three, we're going to do three single crochets and then an increase all the way around. So one, two, three, four, and five into that same stitch. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. That should be our last set. 26, 27, 28, and then 29, and 30. Okay, next we're going to go for 36. So we're going to do four single crochets and then one increase. One, two, three, four, and then five and six for the increase in that same stitch. Seven, eight, nine, 10, and then 11 and 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18 in the next stitch, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 in the next stitch. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30 in the next stitch. This should be our last round. 31, 32, 
and 35 and 36 in the last stitch. So that was row six. Now we'll do row seven. I'm gonna do this row a little bit differently as far as counting, just cause math and doing this and all, all at the same time, remembering what I'm doing. I'm just gonna do um, five single crochets and then an increase for seven all the way around instead of counting all the way to 42. And you know if you've done it right if you end with a um, an increase in the last stitch. So it's off the top of my head it's probably six increases. But let's get along and get going here. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven. So here's where I'm going different. One, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven in the next stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven in the next stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven in that next stitch. And this should be our last set. One, two, three, four, five, and we're coming up to our last stitch here because there's our stitch marker will be right there. Six and seven. Okay, now from row 8 to 15, we're going to just do 42 stitches all the way around. And then when we get to number 15, when you finish number 15, I will come back and we'll get started on the next part. Okay, so you should have just finished your eight rows of 42 single crochets and ready to start row 16. And for um, row 16 on for a little bit, we're gonna be decreasing. So to begin, we're gonna do five single crochets and then one decrease for a total of 36. So one, two, three, four, five, and a decrease. And I don't know why, but my yarn has decided to squeak after all that. <laughs> okay. One. Two, uh, three, four, five, and a decrease. I apologize for the squeaking. One, two, three, four, 
two, three, four, five, and decrease. One, two, whoops. Three, four, five, and a decrease. One, two, three, four, five, and a decrease. One, two, three, four, five, and a decrease. And that brings us right to our stitch marker. For row 17, we're going to decrease 18 times all the way around. You want to try and get these on the tighter side. This is the first time I did that many decreases from 36 to 18. And you got to be really careful when you're stuffing it that you're not overstuffing it to see the spaces. So, whoops. Did I even decrease? Yeah, I think it did. One. So hold on. Sorry, I'm going to start that over again, just to be sure. So one decrease, two decrease, three decreases, four. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Seventeen and eighteen. Hmm. Just kind of guide that a little bit into a circle. And now for row 18, you're going to do 18 single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, four, five. 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Okay, now we're going to start increasing again. That's the hardest part of this whole thing is getting that um to come in like that without leaving a whole bunch of spaces for row 19 we're going to do two single crochets and then an increase for 24. so one two and an increase three four Five, six, and an increase, seven and eight, nine, ten, and an increase for eleven and twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And 15 and 16 in the next stitch. 17, 18, and then 19 and 20. 21, 22, and 23 and 24 in the last stitch of round 19. So for round 20 and 22, you're going to just do 24 single crochets all the way around and I will meet you back here to start row 23. For row 23, we're going to be doing three single crochets and then an increase for 30. Stitch markers almost running out here. So right there. So one, two, three, and an increase for four and five. Six, seven, eight, and increase, nine and ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen and fifteen are an increase. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 are an increase. 21, 22, 23, and 24, and 25 is an increase. 26, 27, 28, and 29, and 30 in the last stitch. 
And now for row 24 to row 29, you're just gonna put 30 single crochets all the way around. And then I will meet you back up here to start row 30. So you guys should now be ready to start row number 30 which is going to be three single crochets and then a decrease for 24. So one, two, three, and then a decrease. Four, five, six, Seven and a decrease for eight, nine, ten, eleven, and a decrease for twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15 and a decrease for 16. Am I at 16? 17, 18, 19, and a decrease for 20. 21, 22, 23 and a decrease for 24. For row 31, we're gonna do two single crochets and then a decrease for 18. So one, two, and a decrease. Three. Oops, that was three. One, two, three, so four. Row number five, then a decrease for six. Seven, eight, and nine is a decrease. Ten, eleven, and twelve is a decrease. Thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen is a decrease. Sixteen, seventeen. And 18 decrease. Now we can do the rest two ways. Um, for row 32, it's going to be one single crochet and a decrease all the way around for 12. And for row 33, it's going to be six decreases for six, and then you'll close off. But depends how much space you need for stuffing your guy. I like to put my eyes in when he's stuffed and then I got to take the stuffing out and then oh, then I close him back up. Uh, that'll be later on but so I'm going to leave mine open at 18 so that I can get the stuffing in and pull it out and get the safety eyes in and all that. So make sure, if you're going to stop where I'm at right now, make sure you leave quite a long tail because um, you're going to need, what, 18 more stitches in there? Okay, so let's get started on the muzzle or the nose, whatever you want to call it. And you'll be doing that in your main color, so the same color as your body. So 
So make your loop or your magic ring. And we are going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you're going to go into the second chain. I'm just going to put a stitch marker in there just so that I know where my stitch is going when I get to the other side. We're going to be going down this side, increasing here, and then going back up this other side. So first we're going to do five single crochets. One. Two, three, four, five, and then we're going to put three single crochets into this last stitch right here and kind of work them around to the other side as you go. So there'll be one. Let's tail is in our way here and then kind of twist and go into the, make your next single crochet and then twist again and make your next single crochet and now you're going to put four single crochets across the other side one two Three, four, and then two single crochets into this last stitch, right where your stitch marker is, if you used one. And I'm going to flip that back over. And now you're going to do an increase and then four single crochets. So one and two in the same stitch and then four single crochets, one, two, three, four, and then you're going to do three increases around this side here. So two single crochets in the, the stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch, and two single crochets in the next stitch. Then you're going to do four single crochets along the side, one, two, three, four, and then you're going to do two increases. So two in the next stitch, one and two, and two in the next stitch. And you should have 20 stitches. And then you're going to do three rows of single crochet all the way around 20 stitches. So row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So now we'll do our second row of 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and our last row. Number three of 20 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And then you'll just slip stitch into the next stitch. And leave a long tail for sewing that on. And we will come back and do the arms. Okay, and now for the arms. So take whichever is your accent color and you'll make a loop or your magic ring. And we're gonna be putting six single crochets into the loop. So pull through chain one and we're going to do six single crochets one two three whoopsie four five and six And then we're going to put six increases into each stitch all the way around for a total of 12. Okay. One and two. Three and four. Five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten, eleven. 
11 and 12. And now we're going to do one more row of 12 single crochets all the way around. I don't know what that is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now we're going to decrease. We're going to do one single crochet and one decrease all the way around for a total of eight. So one and two is a decrease. And three and four is a decrease. and five and six is a decrease and seven and eight is a decrease. Now don't go pulling your yarn all the way through because we're going to do a color change. So leave those three loops on your hook and get to your next color. I'm going to be doing red as my main color on this one and you'll just tie that on there or however you like to do color changes. And we'll snip off the yellow. Now we're going to do five rows of eight single crochets. So one, whoops, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, and eight. So that's one row. And I said five, but it's actually six. Row five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that's two rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's three rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That is one, two, three, four rows. 
So two more rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's five rows and onto our sixth row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we're going to stuff that. Um, you want to get it pretty firm down in the bottom of the hand. And then lightly stuff the arm. I think this is probably going to be too much. Make sure when you're stuffing that you're not stuffing it so tight that you can see white and you're pushing out your stitches because then you're overstuffing it and it's you're just not going to be as happy with it if you see your stuffing go through there. So get your hook back in. Make sure your top thread here is where it's supposed to be. And you're going to fold it with your one stitch on the one side and you're going to come into this stitch, this stitch, and this stitch. And you're going to do three single crochets. Make sure you get on through both sides. And nice and tight. One, two, and Three. And then you can tie that off. Leave enough of a tail so you can stitch that back on. And I will leave you here. You make two of these. And um, I'll come back and we'll start on the legs. So I decided the black was too hard to see. I don't know what I'm going to do when I get to the horn. But let's do the, the beginning of the hoof here, or hand, in a different color. So this will be your accent color. And you're going to put six single crochets into your loop. So pull up and chain one. And then one. Two. Three. Whoopsie. I have not. Four. Five and six. And then you're going to do two single crochets and it's each stitch around for a total of 12. So one and two. Three and four. Five and six. Seven and eight. Nine and ten. Eleven and twelve. I got a whole mess. 
just heard something is happening. Take that out. Okay, for the next row, you're going to do one single crochet and then one increase for a total of 18. One, two, and three, four, five, and six, seven, eight and nine, ten, eleven and twelve, thirteen, fourteen and fifteen, sixteen, 17 and 18. And now you're just going to go all the way around one single crochet in each stitch for a total of 18. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, and 18. Now you're going to decrease. So we're going to do one single crochet and one decrease all the way around for a total of 12. So one and two is a decrease. Three. And four is a decrease. Five. And six is a decrease. Seven. And eight is a decrease. Nine. And ten is a decrease. 11 and 12 is a decrease but don't pull your yarn back through leave your three stitches and then we'll change colors back to your main color so I'm gonna grab my black one again here get my stitches back on and then change to my main color which has been blue Now we're going to do five rows. Oops, I gotta cut that black. Five rows of 12 single crochet all the way around. Get that all organized here. <laughs> okay, so pull your main color through. And we'll do our first row of 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
do our second row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We'll do our third row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, and our fourth row one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And just double check that was our fourth row. One, two, three, four. And now our fifth row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 and 12 and then you'll just tie that off leaving a long tail for sewing and I leave way more than we need but let's see and then you'll just firmly stuff this. If you're on your second one, make sure you're stuffing it similarly to your first one. Or you're going to end up with a skinny leg and a fat leg. in this one. Okay. So make two of those and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so now let's start on the horns. So you're going to make your loop. Make it fairly tiny or do your magic ring so you can cinch it up. And the first few rows are not going to be fun. And I'm going to grab a stitch marker because we're going to only do five single crochets and we're going to do a couple rows. So do your pull through and chain one and then now we're going to start on our single crochets. So one, two, 
to three, four, and five. Now we're going to do two more rows of five single crochets all the way around. And when you're starting and going around, make sure you're going in each loop because it's going to look like you're, the one you were just in is the one you're going to go into next. And you'll see that here in a second. So start your first single crochet. So there's one. So our next is way over here. We're in this one. And this is the one we got to go into. Two. And you can cinch that up a bit if you want. So our next one is way over here. There's our stitch being pulled into that stitch. So this is our third stitch here. And then our fourth stitch is right here. Hug. And then our fifth stitch is way over here. So that'll be considered finishing round two. So now we'll do a third row of five. Starting stitch is way. Can you see that? See that one's in that stitch? Our next stitch is way over here. We're going to do five more single crochets all the way around, just like we just did. One, two, three, four, and five. And if you're struggling for this, doing it this tiny, just take your time, pause the video, get your three rows, and then start, start back up wherever you paused. Okay. So we're on row four. Row four, we're going to do an increase and then four single crochets. So two in the first stitch. One, two... And then four single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, and four. I got my stitch marker out and I forgot to even use it. So let's get that in there. I'm going to tuck mine down in a bit so it's hopefully out of my way. Okay. So now there'll be six single crochets. Most importantly, just make sure you're in the right stitch when you're going around. One. Two. Three, four, five, and six. Now it'll start getting a little bit easier as so our stitch our uh, stitch count gets a little higher. So round six, we're going to do an increase, and then we're going to do five single crochets around. So an increase, and then five single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. So 
We're row seven. We're going to do seven single crochets all the way around. One. Oops. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six and seven. For round eight, we're going to increase and do six single crochets all the way around. So an increase. One and two. And then six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. For row nine, we're going to do eight single crochets all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. A row ten. We're going to do one increase and seven single crochets around. So one and two, and then seven. One, two, oops, catching my. Three. Four, five, six, seven. Sorry, this is, I'm getting a little awkward here. I switched position and now my, my one arm's resting here, but the other, my other arm's just kind of floating in the air here. I've got nothing to rest it on. Okay, for the years, we're going to do um, 6 and 12 into a small um, with the accent color and then we're going to do the back in the main color. So I'm going to be using yellow again. Yeah. Oops. So make your knot or your magic circle. And then we're going to be doing six single crochets. So grab your yarn, pull through, and one, two, three, four, Five, six, and then two single crochets in each stitch around for 12, just like every other one where we started. So one and two, three and four, Five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten, eleven and twelve, and then you'll just slip stitch into the next stitch, tie that off, 
and you'll cut it fairly short because you're gonna want to tuck this in behind. And then get your main color. And you're gonna start that exactly the same way you just did the yellow or your accent color. And make a loop. That's not a very good one. And then you're gonna do six single crochets into this loop. So chain one and one two three four five and six and then you're gonna do six increases all the way around for 12. One, two, oops, sorry. That was one and two in the same stitch. Three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten, eleven and twelve. Then you're going to put a slip stitch in the next stitch and you're going to grab the inside of your ear and you're going to put the wrong sides together. Get your yarn on the other side of your hook. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> And you'll want to get this part just behind your needle, your needle, just behind your crochet hook, because you're going to start in here and in here. So go through your first layer and then get in your second layer right there. It might be tight. And then pull through and do one single crochet and you're going to do um, one single crochet and one increase all the way around for 18. So the next one we're going to put two in. Make sure you get through both sides and all four of your loops there. So that's two and three. And this will be four. five and six and seven eight and nine ten eleven and twelve Thirteen, so when you get to fourteen and fifteen, so stop there for a second, and you're going to want to make sure you have all your ends tucked in. And you'll do sixteen. And hop into here, just on this side of your knot where you slip stitched, and that'll be 17 and 18. 
And now you're just going to do 18 single crochets all the way around. And this is your first stitch right here, not this one. This first stitch right above there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Now you're going to fold your ear in half with the um, accent color on the inside. And you're going to put three single crochets in here. However you can get them in there. So one, and I'm going to put a second one in that same stitch, two, and then the third one back here. Just push in there. Make sure you get a couple. So I got at least two pieces of yarn there. And that's your third. And then tie that off with a bit of a tail for sewing on later. Okay, so now we're going to temporarily stuff the head and then we're going to sew the muzzle on. So grab your stuffing. You're going to also need your pins um, and your darning needle. If you have lots of pins, use lots of pins. Whoops. Maybe just a tad more. Whoops, I keep hitting my camera. Excuse that. Okay, so this is where we used our stitch marker and I'm gonna make that the back. So we'll flip it around. And it doesn't matter if you're here, here, here. Just generally have your stitch markers in the back where you um, went up in your rounds. All right. Take your muzzle, and if you can see, this is where you did your big 18 decreases. You're going to want to put it just above that. And normally, you'll notice my eyes aren't on here yet. Normally, in most patterns, you're told, like, put it on the, like, 6th or 7th row. If you're coming from the bottom, the 30th and 35th. But... I don't want to have my eyes in here already because if I say I put my eyes here and I put my muzzle and I get sewing, my eyes are going to be way up here. Or say I put my eyes down here and then I'm going to have to put my muzzle way down here when I want it up here. So get that positioned. Most importantly, what you want to make sure when you're going around is all your stitches line up along this. Hold on along this line right here or whichever line you've chose and the top are in this line here or whichever line you cho you chose and i think i've got one two three four four to five lines in between so i always start on the bottom let's see if i can turn this so i'm not shadowing myself and this is another reason why if you don't have the eyes in yet, you don't have to worry if this is centered between the eyes. I mean, you will have to unstuff again and restuff. But in my opinion, that's a lot easier to do 
and to have your mouth sewed on and your eyes and your mouth are not lined up. So I think I'll put one more in the bottom here. And then I'm gonna move up to the top and just squish that however you feel you wanna have it. If you get it lined up right the first time you do it, then you're not gonna to have to keep coming back to it. So I'm gonna be stitching on this row here once I get all my pins in, keep a firm, firm grip on your, um, up here and keep it in position while you pin. And don't worry about overkill. If you've got the pins, use them. My stuffing's going to be in the way, but I will fix that as I go around. Get a couple on the side. Just kind of keep checking that you have that in the shape you want, where you want it. Whoops, see, I made a bit of a dent there, so I'm going to pull that out a bit and pin it. It's looking pretty good, I think. I'm going to put a few more pins in. I feel like this side needs to go up a bit. I'm even going to put a few pins in here, even though they're probably not reaching anywhere. Um, okay, so just take your string here. I'm going to tuck, tuck my extra strings back in here so they don't get in my way. And now you can follow me along for a little bit how I'm going to stitch it on or stitch it on however you prefer. To get started, I'm going to go down right where my knot is here. See, so I'm going to go right in there and through here. Because so I'm going to be going down and around, but for my first one I want that knot hidden. So I'll hide that knot. And then right where this, this green pin is, that's where I'm going to put in my first stitch. So you go in there, catch a, at least one thread on the bottom there, and then come through. All the while, keep your thumb on here with steady pressure. You don't want to be squishing it out of place, but you don't want to be letting it move either. So then we're going to go into the next stitch. So we went through that one. We're going to go down into this one. Just catch a little bit. And remember, we're going to be going along this line here now on top of our, where we did our 18 decreases. If your pins are in the way, take them out. If they're not, leave them in. Like I have a few less pins here than I wish I did. So I just keep going around like that. Try not to catch the stuffing because it is a bit of a pain to try and get it out and off, especially if you're doing like a black color or a dark color. That's little, those little fibers just show right up like crazy. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going around just like this. So up the side till you get to where you, you're going to put your, um, your top stitches. So sew up to about here and then go straight across into there and then down into here. And you're, you'll go into one of these stitches and tie off and then you'll pull it. You pull your, put your needle through out the back, give it a good little tight tug. And then I will meet you back to put the eyes on. 
So I've gone all the way around and then I said I better tie it off with you guys just in case this is the first time you're making one of these. And if it is, I apologize for not making this beginner friendly. But by the time I, you're here now, you've probably, if you've stuck with me, you're going to have all this down. So just, you just grab that one of these strings down here and make, I make two knots. Just because I don't trust that it won't stay together. And then where you made your knot, you'll just find the little hole right beside there. And then come through the back. Now if I was doing two of these, like say the arms, I would pull them both through the back and then tie here. Um, when we get to the arms, you'll see. And then just cut that and it'll bounce back inside the head. You can shape your nose a little bit. And then we open, now we'll put on the eyes. I just got a little bit of a mess here. So my eyes, I bought this little pack through Amazon. I have no idea what brand. I'm, I'm not going to put a link down. But it's actually really good for a little starter pack. Because you get different size of eyes. You get a few noses. Eyes. Um, I haven't found a big use for the noses yet. But I've actually ordered more of these. And they're the 14 millimeter eyes. And I've also ordered 20 millimeter eyes. Um, so we'll be using the 14 millimeter eyes today. So I'll take two of those. And their backs. And we'll pull some of that stuffing out. Not all of it, because we want to see, we're going to want to see where our eyes go. And I usually kind of come up from the side of the nose here and just one or two stitches. Actually, I should have left that stuffing in while well, I placed them and then took it out. Okay. Yeah, we are all wonky here now. Okay, so just come up from the nose. Uh, up from the nose. And then just see if that's where you like them. Main thing, keep it in the same stitch across. And I might go up and over one more. It's hard to tell because I did pull all the stuffing out. Up and over one. This is where you kind of, you're just going to start making them your own now. Give him his little character. Um, nope, over one more. I think that's good. So, for me, I am in the, let's see, how are we going to count this? So that's row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm between 9 and 10. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, about 6 to 7 stitches apart. So now I'll take the stuffing out. Something stuck in there. I don't know what. There's a lot of stuffing in there. And then you'll just fold that inside out a bit. Find the end of your your eye, your safety eye. And then just squeeze her down. And do the same on that for the other eye. Listen for that click, one or two clicks. Now we'll restuff. And when you're stuffing the head, 
kind of remember that we have a really deep crease here so you want the stuffing to go up here and out and not fill in here as much so you, you're not looking for a circle you're looking more for a bit of a mushroom shape so get over to the sides a little bit when you're stuffing it so see how that's kind of filling out there but not as much on the bottom if you will really if you try and make it round you're really going to stretch these stitches and then you're going to see the stuffing through there i think that's about enough for there we'll put some in the body put a little bit for stability in the neck but you don't need too much remember don't overstuff you can always add a little bit extra when you're down to your um, last six stitches when you're closing make sure he's shape you're happy with I think I'm good I wish I could see more of this <clears throat> So now get your crochet hook and we're going to close him off and remember whoopsie we left off at i didn't bring my pattern up but we left off where we left 18 so we're gonna need 12 stitches so we're gonna do one single crochet and one decrease for a total of 12. Make sure you get that back nice and tight how you had it when you first finished. Okay. So, if you can see this. Oops, I got my string on the wrong side of my hook. Okay, so, and watch you don't get that stuffing. I gotta get back into the position that I was in yesterday. So, one single and one decrease. That's two stitches. My yarn's really had a time here. One single for three. One decrease for four. And if you're having a trouble with the stuffing, just get your finger down there in between, just like you're working a flat piece. So one single, which is five. One decrease, which is six. One single, which is seven. One decrease, which is eight. One single, which is nine. One decrease for ten. One single for 11, and then a decrease for 12. And you'll know if you did it right if your last decrease is coming up to your stitch marker. Okay, so now we're going to do six decreases, so we'll have six stitches. Make sure they're on the tighter side. But it is the bottom, so you, if you do see the stuffing, it's not going to be quite as bad. So that's one decrease. That's two decreases. And I'm catching my stuffing a bit, sorry. Three decreases. Four decreases and just keep moving that stuffing out of your way. Five decreases. And six decreases. How did I do six? Anyways, I'm at my stitch marker. 
I may have counted wrong. If not, it's not going to matter because we're going to pull this in and tighten it up. So I might have five, you might have five, I might have six. So you did your slip stitch, pull your, see I use, I did way too much um, extra. I think if you're, it's too late now, but if you make another one, about two arm lengths should be enough of, uh, more than enough actually when you're tying this off, if you do another one. I'm actually going to cut this because I don't need three feet of yarn to pull through. <laughs> okay, so get your darning needle and you're just going to weave in and out of these stitches and then tighten it up. Manipulate it a little bit so that this will be on the flatter side. You don't want this to be a round bottom because you're going to want them to sit like this. So see that. It, if it was, it does kind of look like a mushroom. Okay, and then just find a find a place to tie a knot in here. I like to do mine close to the center so I can pull it down through the middle. I'm going to do a double knot here. Maybe that would happen. And then we'll just pull it through the bottom and out the back somewhere. Make sure it's an actual, actually between stitches so you're not pulling through these threads and um, splitting them and cut and there is whichever uh, goat you're making with the um oh I guess I'm making this for all my you might have a totally different creature going right now but right now I'm making the goat For the nose, we're just going to put two little um, threads of yarn on each side. So pick where you want to have your... I think I'm going to have them go from here to here. So I'm just going to pull a, a strand of thread through here. I got about an arm's length, which is way more than you'll need. And then... I don't know why I took that off. Just fine. I'm going to put mine a little crooked. You can put yours straight. I'm just going to put mine right there. Then come back up. And then go back in and out the bottom somewhere. You're going to tie there so it doesn't really matter where you go as long as you're kind of away from the stitches for the nose. And then I just thread the other side um, probably about there I think. Go through. Come up where you had your other nostril start. That doesn't look right. Oh, I'll just give it a pull. And then go back down and out where you're, you put your first thread through. And you might have to just kind of tug on those a bit to make them a little more even how you want them. And then you're just going to tie And we'll thread those through and pull them out the back somewhere. And I 
definitely have way too much thread here. I mean, you'll be doing this earlier than me, so you shouldn't have all these pieces in your way. And then just right out somewhere out the back. And then we'll do the next piece. Okay, so let's put the arms on now. So what you're going to want to do is kind of line them up where you figure you want them. So mine are just kind of just a little hair behind where we have the eyes. And I'm going to pin them there. And we're going to be sewing them right in this crease. Um, the pins might not do much good once we get going, but we'll see what happens. And I got my string to the back because when I get up here, I want to kind of give it a pull so that it can kind of tip a little bit. Instead of sometimes you'll have like a little loose side and I want that in the back. Okay, let's get our yarn threaded on our needle. And I'm only going to put about three or four stitches in. You put in as many as you want. So I'm going to grab this back stitch here. And I'm going to come up and through one of our... Um, single crochets we did at the top of the arm the first one in the row and this will kind of hide the knot in the back and hopefully keep that nice and tight and then I'm just going to go through the next single crochet we'd made and grab let's see if you can see this just grab the next stitch in line there I think yep next stitch in line is right there Oopsie. And then we're going to come back up from this side, or however you want to sew it on, up to you. This is how I seem to be doing it on all my other ones. Look at this. Look at this disaster. <laughs> the joys of sewing the parts together. See, pinning it was pointless. And then I'm just going to come back. So I came in that. I came in that one, so I'm going to have to go down in here somewhere and just catch just in front of the arm there. And then we'll just, you can, I'm going to go back through one more time and then go underneath to make my knot. Get that useless pin out of there. And I'm just going to put a knot in one of my loops and give it a tie. I'm only going to tie this one once because I am going. I'm going to go in and I'm going to retie it back here. Okay. So now we got to line these back up again. Remember, if you did the first one with the string in the back, do the second one with the string in the back. Line it up about where you want it. Whoops. Ooh, I just snagged my tablecloth. Put my pin back in. And then same as the other one. Just catch a stitch. I'm going to do mine upside down here. Catch a stitch and then come up through one of your single crochets. Not quite in it. Can you see that? 
have my light on the wrong side of me, but there's a wall on the other side, so I can't really do much about that. Go down and through, pick up a stitch. Let's get rid of this pin now. Go back up and through your next stitch. Still looking pretty even. And then go down. And however, I'm going back through. I don't think I did the same thing on that side, but. And then just go down through again to get to the underside. So all you can see is my hands. Sorry about that. And they look like they're pretty even. And you're just going to tie your knot down here again. So now come through I'm gonna go in front and out the back try and get in the center you might be over one or two one stitch or so but do the best you can and get your other string from your other arm do the same thing just put your needle in the front of the arm and back out the back in the same stitch you took the other arm through. Oops. So give them a little bit of a tug and then just knot them up. And I'm gonna do three, I think. Just careful not to cinch it too tight. Watch what it's doing on the other side. We don't want them really so tight that they're coming like straight forward. I don't know if that's possible, but. And then you are just gonna take your ends and put them out through the back bottom somewhere. So put your needle in that same stitch you just, all your threads came out of, and then just out the bottom. And, okay, see so how you can kind of see that little knot? Just give it a little bit of a tug and it'll break three, free. And no one will know what you just did to tie that up. Okay. So now I think we will come back and do the legs. Okay, for the legs, you're going to want your pins out again. And you're going to want the string on the bottom. And you're just going to kind of place them. It's hard to see. A couple stitches apart and evenly between the, the nose. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you do it while he's sitting. Just so you can make sure that you don't... Um, Put it, if you want them to sit, I mean, you could do them like this, too. He's pr oh, actually, that's kind of cute. I actually kind of like that better than sitting, but I'm doing all mine sitting, so we'll make him sit. Just because he probably won't stand on his own. Okay, so once you've decided where you want them, and for me, I think it's kind of between the nose and the arms. I'll know once I get them pinned. So just pin all the way around again like you already did with the muzzle. I think he's a little high, but I will check him once I get going here with the other leg on. So string on the bottom to keep them even, line them up with the row you just pin that guy on and kind of between the nose and the arms 
Right now it's looking like there's two, two and a half stitches between them. But depending on how you crochet different or the same from me, they might, yours might look a little bit different. Wherever you're happy with the legs, that's where you're going to put them. But before you sew them on, just kind of test them out a bit before and after, just so that you know you're going to be happy with them after. If you have to move them now, a lot better than having to move them or undoing it or not being happy with your guy. So I think I am happy with that. So look from the bottom. So I'm going to let you guys sew those on on your own. And I, what am I going to do next? Um, I'm saving the horns for later because I'm doing this as a base for all the different ones. And this guy might end up with ears that are like a cat or who knows, no horns. So... If you hear me talking about horns or some other part that doesn't belong on the guy that you are doing right now, don't worry. It's just, this is my very first one. So I keep forgetting that I'm going to be making tons of different animals with this same base. And then just like the characters mostly in the head, characteristics in the head are going to be changing. Um... Okay, I'm going to go let you guys sew those legs on. I'll sew my own legs on. And then I think I'm going to probably do the horns, which will be the ears if you're not on the goat or the ox video. Okay, so for the unicorn's horn, you're just going to line it up in the center. Just a little below where you did your um, first six single crochets. And I'm going to go right one stitch down. And then you're going to pin that on. Can you see me pinning? Put as many pins in as you'll need. Usually I like to put about almost a pin per stitch just to keep it secure. But that's because I'm, I'm not the best at sewing these on. So it moves around on me a bit. So I just want to make sure it's not going to move around on me. And then you're just going to go in each stitch, come down and around, go in the next stitch, go down and around. Try and keep your your stitches where you go down underneath the horn here and then you won't see this yellow oh, let me just do a couple like um on the see on the goat here i didn't quite go under the horn so if you don't want to see this yellow stitching you want to go underneath So you'll go under here and then come up through. And then go, I go in the same stitch I was just in. I really can't see that very good. that next stitch and then go back in through there so just keep going around like that and then we'll come back and do the next piece okay for the ears 
We're going to do them a little differently than we've done the other critters because we want them for the horse to kind of be standing up and pointy. So first thing I'm going to do is close this up a little bit. Just to help it look a little bit more like a, a horse ear. And then we're going to pin it about in line with this center stitch and the arm. And about halfway between the eyes and the, the horn, assuming you've done yours similar to what I've done. And then we're going to hold, well, we'll pin them like good crocheters. <laughs> The main thing is you want to kind of close this up a bit and have it stiff enough that it stands straight up. And then you'll just start going down and through. And I'm going to go through two rows of stitches just to keep that, um, that part more um, less floppy. Just grab some here. I think the biggest thing is you want to make sure that your um, your ears are even on both sides. Everything else you can kind of fix and twist, but if your ears are uneven, it's going to be more noticeable. I really didn't have this hard of a time putting any of the other horse's ears on, but because I'm videoing it, it seems it doesn't really want to listen to me. Okay, so get that how you want it, and tie it off, and do the other ear, and we'll start on the next part. Okay, for the horse's hair, all you're going to do is decide how well how much you want and the length. I think for me, I think I did, I basically um, just did the length of the body up to the ears here. And then I just seen the length, spread my fingers, and I just wrapped the yarn around and around and around and around. I think I used more, well, more than 30 chunks. So go around 30 times, and then you'll cut your yarn on one side, and then leave these, and then you'll have a little stack like this. And once you get, this one's going to be a little longer, but I'm just going to show you. I'm sure it's not hard to figure out. But all I did was I would, I'd go in one stitch, hook that yarn, and then pull it through. Oops, did I get that? For the front of the mane, the bangs, I did every stitch I could put it in between the ears. And then when I got to the back, I started in the middle and I did one line all the way. If you can, I don't know if you can see this. I did one line all the way from between the ears down to the back and then I did a, a line to a stitch over like a stitch a space and a stitch and then the other side I did the same thing there's one stitch in between these and then I came back and put every couple of stitches 
just to fill in that that hole between uh, between them. And if you're if you want to leave it like this, I'm leaving this one like this. Um, this guy, I threaded all his, I twisted all his hairs out. So if you want it to look like that, where did I put my darning needle now? Well, that's interesting. I did not move. <laughs> well, I'll use a pen. So you just take the yarn, untwist it a bit, and you'll get, um, I use my darning needle, but a pin will work. And you just pull them apart, separate all four strings. And you just keep doing that. This is kind of a project where you probably will you probably shut the video down um, and have to come back unless you enjoy well maybe you want to watch to the end while you do this this took me a couple hours so this is not as easy with a needle doable I think if I was sitting down it'd be a lot easier but and then after you get these all separated, if you like that, leave it how it is. If you have a wire brush, um, mine's just like this. Give it a little brush out. I, I do want to have my Chinese New Year ones kind of brushed, just because I started that way. And I'll show you how to put the tail on in a little bit. But I think I'm going to do the unicorn mane first. I'm just not sure how to organize the two different styles of manes. Anyway, I'm going to leave that like that for now. But brush it till it's how you want it. And let's come. Um, I'm going to pause the video and then um, do the unicorn mane. So if you're not doing the unicorn, you can just skip past this next part. And um, we'll get to finishing it off. Okay, for the mane of the unicorn, we're going to make six to eight of these long um, little curly cues. And then we're going to make two shorter little ones to go in front of his face. And you can adjust this however you want. Maybe you want them longer, shorter. Maybe you want them all the same. But if you want to do it so it looks like the one I did, that's what we'll be doing today. Um, so you just make your loop. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail. This is my first um, one, so I haven't sewed it on yet. So I'm not sure if I need that tail or not, but just in case, I am going to put that on. So for the, um, the long one, you're going to chain 40. One, two, three, four, five, six, oops, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And this seems like a lot, but um, for every... Um, chain you make or length you make so say this is 40 once you get putting your single crochets back up alongside this chain it's going to shrink it down to about half of what you did so it's actually going to be the length of about 20 chains so you've got to make it that extra length so 21 22 23 24 25 26 
27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. My yarn is really not wanting to come with me here. Okay, so in the second chain from your hook, you're going to do a slip stitch and then another slip stitch. And here again, after that, is where you're going to kind of decide what kind of curls you want, if you want to play around or not. I'm going to be doing two single crochets in each chain up and that's just because I like the size for this little guy but if yours ends up if you're using different yarn and it ends up bigger than mine you can do um, three half double crochets four four double crochets five double crochets um, whatever you think looks the best for whatever your tension is but we're going to be doing two in each one so one, two, make sure that chain does not twist when you're going into the, always want to make sure these V's are up on this side and it hasn't gone like this because your curl will not turn out how you want it to. So just two, or did I put three in? No, I put two in. Um, I I did something else lately where I put three in, like, but I have, I have, oh, I know why, the tail I put three in. So when we do the tail, I did one slip stitch and then three single crochets in each chain. And that was just so they curled a little bit more and I'll show you the difference. Well, let's pretend I have this done all the way because this is going to take forever. This did take me quite a while. This took me, well, it took me three days just to figure out how I wanted to do the mane. And then, or the, I guess it's the mane, the little curls. And then to get them all right, I've undone so many curls in the last couple of days. So when you get up to the top here, you're going to do a slip stitch. I don't know if I can pretend we're at the top. You're going to do a slip stitch into that very first chain you made. And then you're just going to keep going another 40 um, chain. Oh, come, well, obviously you can't crochet like this. <laughs> just do another 40 chains. And then you're going to come back up with your two single crochets in each stitch. And then you're going to go back into that chain. And then, and then you're going to go again. I hope this isn't confusing you the way I'm doing this. But you're pr basically just making your eight chains, slip stitching, make a chain, come back up, slip stitch, make your chain, come back up, slip stitch, um, until you got eight. And then when you have your, well, six or eight, I did eight. When you get to the back up here again, when you do your two little front ones, um, do about 20 or 25. I think I did 25 in here. I didn't write it down for some reason. But I think I did 25 because that's the same thing I did in the, in the tail. So here's the difference. This one is the two single crochets in each chain and then this one is three single crochets so it is a nicer um little curl but i wanted to be able to pull mine down because the first time i did this i only did 20 stitches and all my little curls ended way up here and i just didn't like it so i wanted to make it a little more you know stretchier for the tail i did the exact same thing as the mane only I only did I did four I was gonna do three but I just couldn't um I couldn't leave it with three I had to have a fourth one and when you get going you might see why and then 
we're just gonna once you have that all done you'll just tie it in here one stitch on each side and then tie on the bottom um should I do the other tail now or stop this oh sewing it on oh my goodness I just want to be done this so for to sew it on where's my threads Oh, I'm just a mess today. Ah! <laughs> okay. You'll you'll see after you have it all done, you'll have these, you'll have this nice little center in here. I just place that right on top, making sure my two, where's my two short ones? Two, is that a short one? Making sure my two short ones are in the front. And then just stitch in and out, in and out here. And secure that center piece down and then these will just kind of take care of themselves okay so for the horse's tail you're just gonna do the same thing you did for the mane only I made mine a little bit longer so that I could cut them off whereas if I made them the same length as the mane I might not have been able to to pull them through how I need to pull them through so I think these are at least 10 inches long. So you're gonna find your bottom and then you're just gonna go up a row or two. Stick your hook up inside and you're gonna grab the middle of that group of yarns and just, whoops, and pull it through try and get them all at one time i missed one no nope, i didn't miss one and then you're going to get your fingers inside the middle of those grab your other ends on over here and then just pull them through and tighten them up so it's basically just like the main only it's on a lot bigger scale and then just decide how long you want them and give them a trim. And I think we are just about, if not, all the way done. So I almost forgot, I added this little red string and I'll just show you what I did. Um, it was just to add a little bit of extra. You don't need it. And if you're doing this for um, a child or someone that's going to be like playing with it or something, you're going to want to do a little more stitching or, or even make a chain. All I did was I brought the, what is this, arm's length again. <laughs> I brought the, the middle over the behind the ears, I come down under the nose. Just give it a twist. You can knot it if you want. Actually, let's knot it. And then come up and cross over and then come down and knot it again. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's not secure. If you want to secure it, um, at least get it down, tied down in here somewhere. Mine's just basically for show and for the video. If I were to sell this or gift it to somebody, I would definitely um, probably wrap it right in here or give it a knot on each side before I went down. Um, okay, I think that's it. Well... Congratulations, we did it. Um, I don't know if you've been doing one of these um, horses or the unicorn or if you're going to plan on doing all three, but I thank you for watching my video. Please, if you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, send me a comment, thoughts, questions, um, and you guys have a great day and happy crocheting.